Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter a new project every week together. And this week we are doing a quote that's very fun and Keenan loves. I do love it. <laughs> it is this. Oh, it says throw kindness around like confetti. Just throw it. <laughs> just throw it. I was like Keenan. He wants to throw kindness at, at everywhere. Um, so this is just a fun quote. We're going to be learning something new this week, and it's called stippling. And so before I jump into the steps, the supplies that I'm going to be using are, there's three different brush pens. So we're using the Tombow Duo brush pen. The first one is this red. It's 885, and this is warm red. This is chrome orange, which looks like yellow, and I've said that before. 993. I don't know if this will stay for you, Keenan. Okay. And then I love this color. Coral. 873. So those are the three colors we are using. But if you don't have these supplies, you can use whatever you want. You can choose any different colors. Maybe you like blue confetti or pink confetti. Well, we have pink, I guess, but if you like purple confetti, if you like a different color, please use whatever supplies you have. If you don't have what I'll be going through. So that, and then the paper that I'm using, this is Bristol paper. So our, our final project is gonna be on Bristol paper, and this is essentially a thicker cardstock. And so this is great for when you're doing your final projects, instead of just using computer paper, it has a smoother texture, so it's kinder, I plug that in. <laughs> it's kinder. <laughs> no, you threw that in. <laughs> Even better. Um, to your brush pens. And so when you're using these often, I want to explain this really quickly because I don't say it very often. So when you, when you use smoother paper, it's kinder on your brush pens, which means that they won't fray as fast. So if you've used your brush pens for a while, they might fray a little bit and you can still use it. It still works. You just have to be more mindful about um, your pressure but that's why I like to use smooth paper, but you can still use watercolor paper if you have that. You can use any type of paper. Just what I recommend is Bristol paper is good for these projects. Okay, Bristol paper, I'm gonna use a pencil and an eraser, and then also these handouts that you can get on our website at letsmakeart.com. If you go to the lettering section and find this throw kindness kit, there will be a download link where you can get this as well if you don't have our subscription box. So, oh, I got too ahead of myself. Now, the steps, there are five different steps. So I'm gonna be going through just a brief overview of lettering and how you can connect the foundation strokes. Then I'm gonna go through thumbnail sketches and how you can lay out, because this is a longer quote, um, we've been doing maybe shorter quotes and I wanna show you kind of the process through laying things out. The third is we're gonna do a pencil sketch of your bigger piece. The fourth is using the brush pens. And then the fifth is I'm gonna show you what stippling is. And it's just a fun little technique I thought it was perfect for the word confetti. So we're gonna put those all together. Now, the first thing is practicing. So, okay, so on this sheet, I have, if you notice, there are gray lines and I also drew little arrows. So each arrow represents the direction that you want to go in. So with lettering, what we're remembering in the motto that we say to ourselves is thin on the up, thick on the down. And so what, what that is referring to is the direction your hand is going. So when my hand is going down, I'm gonna draw a thick down stroke. So thick, and I'm gonna push and apply pressure to my brush pen. And then the K is still kind of a downstroke like that. So you can decide if you want your K to be thick or thin. It's funny that I'm starting with that letter because that's the only kind of exception because there's three thicks. So you can decide if you want to do a thin or thick on the, the second and third stroke. Also, it's K for Keenan, so. Oh, oh. Yeah. No. Keenan knows how to do his name now. I do, it's not a big oh, deal. No, you only... no, I can do the K. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if you can do the rest of his name. Um, okay, so thick on the down, thin on the up. And I'm going to lift up and just relieve pressure. So the thing with lettering that I want you to remember is that this is not just cursive because you're going to go on autopilot and just draw really fast. I want you to be mindful and to take this slow. And in, I know it's counterintuitive, but it will help you to get to know this brush pen. 
So when I do my neck stroke, I'm gonna overlap a little bit and then start. Thick on the down. So thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. So you'll notice that I'm taking it stroke by stroke. So the D is a C plus an L. So my hand is going slow. A couple things is you will notice that my paper is angled a little bit. I am right-handed, so that helps me to set myself up. Rather, if you are left-handed, you might write like that, which I'm gonna try in a second. So I've been practicing. So when you do your cursive S's, or your script S's, there are two different ones, or there, there's multiple different styles. You can letter however you like. Um, but this one is the traditional cursive script S, and then I tend to do them like this. So you can decide which one you like, and then dot my eye. But what I wanted to show you is, really quickly, when you are left-handed, I would experiment with the angle of your paper, and I tend to grip a lot closer. I'm gonna drop beneath it. So I'm gonna take it slow. Oops. Hold your other paper. I am not left-handed, but I understand lefty struggles, so I've been trying to show. So I'm gonna take it stroke by stroke. Oops. So when you're doing this, I would experiment with this. Some lefties are underwriters and some lefties are overwriters. I tend to come more on top of the letter and come from the side. I'm just gonna write kind. Thick on the down. This is, I'm not gonna say it's not very good because that's not how we talk here. But I am trying. Kind. <laughs> ah. Does that work? That almost looks like my K. <laughs> A little shaky. So what I want, I wanted to show that I can't, you can try and do both hands if you want to be ambidextrous. But the reason why I wanted to show it is that if you're having struggles, and I know I've seen in the group some people being hard on themselves that they're not getting this, I've been doing this with my right hand for so long and my left hand is just getting comfortable. So this is not only a mindful act that you're learning, but this is also being kind to yourself and realizing this is my maybe third time writing with. So if this is your third time writing with, lettering with us, it's okay if it doesn't look the best because you are going to continue to grow with us as we go forward. That was my little spiel. I just wanted to say that because I've been seeing some, some people being hard on themselves. You're throwing kindness out right now. I'm throwing <laughs> Thanks. Oh, we're just going to throw that in. Yeah, all the time. I'm going to pepper it. I'm going <laughs> to throw it in whenever I can. Um, okay. So once you practice, you can use, I left some blank spots so you can practice doing the word a few times. You can practice doing the whole quote if you'd like. Um, but kindness is the biggest word. So then I wanted to show you... For the stippling aspect of this, which is stippling is just, if you can see on this guy, there are, you can see the word confetti, but it's created by all these little dots around it. And so a trick to doing that is these different steps. So the first step is you write out your word. And then I think I need a sharper pencil, but I'll do it with you guys. So... This is just for practice. So you write out your word first. And then the second step, so this is step one. Or I'm going to do step two, and this is step three. Okay, so step two is if you'll see, is I, what I did was I outlined my letters, or I outlined the stroke that I already created. And so what you're doing is you're creating, actually, this is how you do bubble lettering. I did this, I loved doing this growing up, creating bubble lettering. Um, but what you're doing is I am drawing on the outside, leaving a little bit of space around. Doesn't need to be perfect, but just draw around and then Okay, I'm just gonna do this fast. So
So then, like that. So that's the, first, that's the second step. And then the third step is that if you wanted to create, and the reason why I wanted to go through this before we go through the final step or the final project is, like I said, this is how you can create bubble lettering. So if you like the way that this looks and some lettering artists create things like this, is what you would do is you would do that. And then if you have a better eraser, or mine's just really small. Oops, I'm just gonna use this is you would erase the inside letters. And maybe I should have written it a little bit lighter, but it's all good. This was just to show you practice. But this is just a fun style if you want to kind of mix it up instead of doing script all the time. You can add some fun style to it. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Oops. I forgot that. Oh. Oh, dot the I. So, oh, that looks kind of off. Let me fix that really quickly. Okay, that was a very quick sketch version of that. But that is how you can create bubble lettering if you'd like to play with that. But those are the steps that we're gonna take once we do our final one to do stippling. So that's just another thing that you can practice. Now, that was step one. Step two of your project is we're going to do some thumbnail sketches. So thumbnail sketches are essentially just small drafts, small sketches of your big idea. So when you have a long quote, throw kindness around like confetti, what you might do, throw kindness around like confetti. This is my handwriting, way different than my lettering. Throw kindness around like confetti. So if you have this long quote that you're going to be doing, what you can think about is what word do you want to create emphasis on? So I like this quote and what my brain thinks of is kindness and confetti. So what you can do is what are different ways that you can emphasize that? So you can do that from the shape. You can actually do that from color. If you have a bunch of different colors, you can emphasize it by color. Um, maybe you do bubble lettering on just the word kindness or I'm trying to think of different things. You can change, we've learned about shapes of your letters or the angle of letters. So there's a lot of things that you can play with and experiment with. And the whole thing is that if you have a big project, you don't wanna draw that so many different times, really big. Cause one that's, it's, it might, it takes a long time and why not just help yourself by drawing these thumbnail sketches. So what you can do is you can play, so first I'm trying to figure out layout. Do I like them all stuck like that? Or I noticed that like is a smaller word, so maybe I want to put them, and you'll notice I'm drawing these really fast around like confetti. So do I like that where this is one, two, three, four, five lines, this is four lines, or, so I like this, then from there maybe I play with, okay, if I wanna emphasize kindness like I was saying, maybe I try, everything else in a block font. Or, that's kinda cool. Or let's see, what else can I do from there? Then you can play with, okay, maybe you do like that and you want to play with the angle like we learned about in the Stop Wishing Start Doing project. Can you read that? <laughs> I can read that. <laughs> That's the whole point. This is just for you. It's not for Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> it's just but if for... I can read it, anyone should be able to. <laughs> right? Oh, sorry. He's smart. 
<laughs> um, okay, so there are different things that you can do and experiment with, and that's the whole point of what we're trying to do. So when I did this process a few different times, you, you can do five, you can do 50, whatever, whatever you feel like. When I was doing this process, I decided that, and when I saw the word confetti, that's where my brain went to stippling, which I learned a while ago, that it's just a cool different effect. So that's why what I ended up doing was I played around and I decided I wanted to do all script for this one. So that's how, so I took this layout, throw kindness around, like, and then I just decided that what if I did this cool stippling effect? So this was literally what I did with my sketch. Because <laughs> I just thought if I did that, what it would look like. So you can see that is a very simple thumbnail sketch of this bigger idea. So this is the second step that I'd like you to take some time to do. Some people just go for it and you totally can. But if you want to get all your ideas out of that great brain of yours and just out onto the paper, throw it onto the paper. Got it. Just like kindness. <laughs> okay, step two. Now, step three is once you have your thumbnail sketch that you like, you can make this a lot prettier and clean that up if you'd like. But what we're going to do is we're going to then lay it out on bigger. And so this is a download that, like I said, you can get on our website if you don't have our subscription box with us. And what I did was I took what I created and I just made myself guidelines and boxes. So this is a step that you don't have to do. It might help you if you'd like to create things centered. If you want to make your own layout, what I would do is this is <coughs> Rhodia paper and it's the dot version. And we have some on our website, maybe. We do, we should. Yeah, we yes. should, unless they're, yeah. So we have some on our website. And this, you will notice, is dotted. You can either use dot or you can use grid. And so maybe once you do your thumbnail sketches, you figure out, okay, do I like, how big do I want my letters to be? Or the layout of it. So maybe throw, kindness is a bigger word. So what I'm doing is I'm not doing any math right now. I'm just kind of eyeballing using these grids as my guidelines. So actually, one, two, three, four. Now Does I will the math do math. Come later? I will do some math now. Like some simple trig or. I wish I did. Calculus. <laughs> I don't use a calculator for this. Um, but the math I was talking about is just counting if you want it to be even. This is just your guideline to kind of lay it out. So throw kindness around. So maybe it's around like, and this might take a tr few tries to figure it out. But the idea is once you do this, which I'm then going to do on your bigger one, is this will help you when you're making it bigger. And you can either expand this and make it bigger on your own, or you can just go and use this guy. And so what I'm doing is I'm using those boxes as my guideline. And if you, so I'm going to erase this and I want to just tell you why just and just not erase it and not say anything. As I was looking at this and we were talking about shapes in the one of a kind project and I realized I drew, I drew that so fast that I wasn't really thinking about it. And this H, this is really minor, but I'm just gonna show you, is this H is more circular and this O is very oval. So to me, I tried to squish that into that space. And so by doing that, I had to make these letters skinnier. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna be mindful and I'm gonna decide for this project, I wanna make all my lettering oval. Maybe I'm gonna do all my lettering oval for everything else and then I'm gonna make confetti circular just to create some variance. So I need to make that skinnier like that. So that feels a little bit better. I just made that H skinnier. So throw kindness. When you're doing this, the other thing is that you can also create, I don't talk about this very often, but 
what's happening is the layout of your lettering is that all of your lowercase letters fall on this X height. So what that means is that if you would like to create your own guidelines, you can do that. That's really high actually. So I don't do this and why I don't teach it very often, but I do want to talk about it is that I don't like to teach perfection because the reality is that we all have different styles and not all lettering needs to be perfect. And so I don't want you to feel trapped by following this, but if you'd like to help create that guideline, that was really light, Keenan, I don't know if you can see that. Um, okay, but by creating that, that might help you to have all your letters about a similar height when you're doing that. So you can play around with that if you wanna change that up or not. Kindness around. So again, maybe you decided to make this all block Font. I just did this all in one instead of breaking that up around like, so I had to write like really big. So again, if you wanted to add this line, you can do that. So then the D and the L and the K go higher. Throw kindness around like Confetti. Okay, so then you will notice that I drew this line and this I made as the baseline, which is the bottom of your letters. So if you think about it, it's the base, it's the bottom of your letters. When you are doing this, I created this so that your F is the descending, so it's going below the baseline. So this is the X, or that's, no, I didn't draw an X height. This is the baseline and this is the descend. So my F is going to go below that. The other fun thing that I know some of you have wanted to learn, and I figured this would be the perfect time to talk about it, is this thing called bounce lettering. And so when you are doing this is, how do I say this? I'm gonna draw another piece of paper. When, okay, so this baseline is what I'm talking about, is, There's a difference between that and that. Actually, this might come a little bit lower. So if you look, that was a very not straight sketch, but you get the point. Is these, all of these lines, these are coming, are also descending in, or it, are going into the descending area. So they're also going lower. So that is something you can play with. I tend to not do that as much in my style, but if you'd like to experiment with that, that is what bouncy lettering is, is you're just going and you're creating this bounce. And it might work perfectly for this word, especially because the word is confetti. Um, but another thing you can play with is, and I wanna show this. I love using, this is the Strathmore marker paper. And the reason why I like it is because it's see-through and you can use it with markers. Is if you also want to experiment is I suggest taking your one word and maybe you do and go and descend some of the letters. But then what if you also make some of them a little bit smaller? So maybe my F is small, my T is big. So when you're looking at that, the reason this paper is great, like I said, is because you can trace over it and you don't have to start all over. Um, but if you're looking at this, these are three different styles. And so there is not, neither of these are right or wrong or the best one or the worst one. They're all just different styles of your own lettering. And these are different ways you can manipulate it. And so as I'm teaching all these different things, that's the biggest thing about lettering is just being mindful of the little tweaks you can make to create a whole different style. So I wanted to plug that little lesson into this project. So that's lettering, bounce lettering. I think you mean throw that little lesson in. <laughs> 
We should have a counter. Okay. Maybe on the on the video you can have a counter for how many times we say throw. Yes. <laughs> okay. <can> count it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of play with the size of my letters. Maybe make that lower. Okay. So add it in confetti. Oh. Scratch that. I said this and I want to keep to my word. I said that I wanted to make confetti more circular shapes versus more oval. And so this, I tend to naturally write more oval. And the reason, the way I can really tell is my O is really oval and my E is really oval. So my C is pretty circular actually. So what I want to do is I want to stick to my word and I want to make it more circular. So what I'm going to do is make sure that my lettering is more wide. And again, this lesson is from the one of a kind where I talk about lettering as shapes. C O N. So what I'm doing is I'm making, oops, that will go off the page a little bit. So I made my letter, so you'll notice specifically my O is bigger and my E is, or wider, and my E is wider. Okay, so once you have your layout, that's step three. And where did my shirt be go? So on these projects, I like to create this template for myself and then I go to the final project. This is just, it's helping me to get one, all my ideas out on paper, but then it helps me to lay it out so I know what the final one looks like when I go to my nicer paper. And so I like to use a light box. And so a light box has light shining, on, shining underneath it. And so when I'm doing that, I need to create a darker line so that it can see through the paper or I can see through the paper. So I'm going to... Ooh, I smell the Sharpie. Powerful. This strong. So I am, ooh, yeah, I'm going to draw it out in a Sharpie or just a dark, it doesn't need to be a Sharpie, a darker pen. You can use your red if you have our kit. Um, and you can also use it as your time to practice your thin on the up, thick on the down. For time purposes, I just wanted to do it like this. Then once I have that, I want to add the stippling, like I explained in the beginning, to my word confetti. So I'm going to do the same technique that I taught earlier, and I'm going to outline and make a bubble around. Actually, I'm just going to do it in this. So. Again, I'm leaving a little bit of space in between. Yeah, this brings me back to middle school. Then, no, definitely not. <laughs> when I would do bubble lettering, and I would love to decorate my binder. But did you ever have the flavored markers, like the blue? Berry? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Did you? Oh, yeah. They were delicious. Actually, Sarah's little girl last night was showing me. She drew something, and it, had, it smelled like banana. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> the sun she made smelled like banana. <laughs> it was so cute. Um, okay. So I'm going to add the inside. There we go. You could even leave it like that, actually. That looks really cool. But the reason why I did that, again, is I'm going to use this outline. So when I'm going to my final project, I'm not actually going to trace this. I'm going to use that outline as my guideline for adding my dots. So, light box. So many things on this table. If you put the top of the light box at the shavings of the eraser, it would be perfect. Perfecto. Perfect. Well, maybe not. <laughs> okay. Leave it right there. It's perfect. I can move. Okay. Oh, I don't need to turn it on yet. So I am using 
painter's tape to tape down my guideline, my template. Then I need a blank piece of the Bristol paper. Again, this is smoother paper, but you can use anything that you have. You still can use watercolor paper. Just know that it's a little bit rougher texture. Okay, so then I'm gonna center this. So the reason why we use painter's tape, or you can use washi tape, is that when I go to remove it, it will be kinder on the paper instead of ripping it off. It'll be nice to it. Okay, got my colors. So the three colors, warm red, chrome orange, and pink or coral. So you can decide, actually I'm gonna talk about one more thing. When you are deciding color layout, you don't have to do exactly this whole thing, but I wanted to explain what went through my brain when I was deciding what to do, was like I said in my thumbnail sketches is I decided I wanted to make, I wanted to put the emphasis on kindness and confetti. And so not only was I doing that by, I made this bigger, but I also thought about what if kindness was a darker color, so in my color palette this time, it's the warm red. And then I wanted to do confetti a little bit different and I made it the yellow and then the remaining two in the coral. So that was just the thought process that went through my head when designing this. One, two, three, I always forget it's three. Okay, so remember to breathe. I know it gets a little bit nerve wracking when you're doing this on paper, but remember, like we say here at LMA, it's just paper. If you don't like it, you can start over. But I also want you to work through it. So I'm thinking about thick on the down, thin on the up. And I'm essentially just tracing. So throw. Nicole, how do you feel about hair flips? I like them. Nice. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> okay. Throw, and then I'm going to use my red. So again, like we did. Oh, Keenan, here's your K. Here it is. Ooh, that noise. The K has a good uh, brush pen noise. <laughs> Little known fact. <laughs> um, so. Actually, Keenan, remember what you were saying last night? He he did his K in a normal, and then he goes, isn't there a loop in the K? Oh yeah. You remembered. I did, yeah. <laughs> so you can have a loop, you don't have to. Mine tend to have a loop just to create some differences. So, oh, the other thing I wanted to show when I'm doing the K is the K is the only letter that you create this kind of awkward movement going this way. Sometimes, in the J, or sometimes in some letters you do go this way, but you're creating this downstroke that's at a diagonal. We'll so, call that the Keenan movement. <laughs> okay, I love it. Um, so you can decide, is your Keenan move K, is it thick? <laughs> um, I tend to make them kind of medium, actually. So when I'm doing it is I apply a medium amount of pressure. So you can break it up. You can do one, and then you can stop, and you can add your loop, and do two. Ooh, I like it. And then thick on the down, then on the up, lift up. So you can do this all in one stroke as well, oops, if you don't want to break it up. So then on the up. Yeah, these making fun noises today. So I'm gonna do that all in one stroke to show. So that was a very long stroke. So it's okay if your natural tendency isn't to do that. You can break it up and then overlap it like I showed here. Kindness. So one thing that I wanna talk about on the E is this is personal preference. I'm gonna use this as a teaching moment is and there's a difference between that and that. 
So it is super slight, but what my eye is going towards is this connection versus this connection. So you can decide. I tend to do it, I, I, I naturally tend to do it this way because sometimes my hand, because I've been doing it for so long, takes this into one stroke. So I did one, two, but that might be if you are just beginning, that might not be your natural tendency. And what you can do is you can go one, two, three. So three different strokes. But what I want you to be mindful of is if you care about this, you might not even care and I'm just talking to myself, but I wanted to show, th thanks, <laughs> um, is that there is a difference. And so it depends on if you want your letters to look more, um, this looks more like an E, but I really like the way this, con this naturally grooves. I don't know if I was gonna say that word, grooves, flows into the next letter. And so those are things that you can play with for the E. There are two different ways that you can play with it. So I'm going to do that where I'm just gonna overlap and naturally connect it and create that smooth connection. And then for my S's, I tend to do them like that. But again, you can do the traditional script if you'd like. Dot my I, I've got a little so I love these pens because you can just go back over. I got a little shaky on that one. Okay, throw kindness. So I realized that I got a little carried away. That's fine. So what I'm looking at is my K is now going to run into my S. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to draw around normally. So again, taking it stroke by stroke. And you'll notice that my paper is angled a little bit because that helps me. So if you notice that, like I said, my K is going to run into it and there's a lot of space in between. You can, you have two options. You can go for it or you can just move this over a tad and line that up. So I moved it over this. Now, now I could just trace still my K. Call that the transportation method. I love it. Doesn't, there, yeah, it doesn't run into the S. Transporting it. Okay, now I realize though I need to move it back because my confetti, I just want to center it. Okay, so now the stippling. Actually, yes, I'm gonna do the stippling and then I'll show you, no, I changed my mind. I'm gonna show you shadowing because I want stippling, like I said, was the final step. So, shadow. When you look at this, I wanted to show two different types of shadows. You can either just draw a line or you can actually have it's essentially a thicker line that's closer that creates just a different type of look. So when you're doing shadows, you can decide where your light source is coming from. Does it come from the right side or the left side for you guys or the right side? And so you just wanna make it consistent. So I'm deciding, typically when I tend to do this is I decide that my light source is coming from the upper right. Maybe it's cause I'm right-handed. Um, but you, it can be either one. And so what's happening is my light source is shining and it's creating a shadow, which is what we're going to be drawing. So you're essentially drawing it on the left side or the right side, like I said, but just keep it consistent one or the other on the side of each stroke. So I'm gonna do the coral ones. I'm just drawing a lit. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm using the other side. So your Tombow Dual Brush Pens have two sides, double whammy. 
and I am using this side. You can still use this side, but I like it because it's a thin, it's a lot thinner, so it helps me just create a thin stroke without really having to think about pressure. So like that, and then for the other one, for kindness, not only is it a different color, but I wanted to create more emphasis by just changing up the shadow a little bit. I'm still thinking about my light source coming from up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a line right next to it. I'm gonna make it thicker. So, I'm, so my, my light source is creating a darker, a wider shadow because these letters are bigger. And the reason why I didn't draw a shadow on here, even though I could do it on the left side, is because my light source is coming here. So pretend like it's hitting this flat part. So when it's hitting it, the shadow actually could be right here, but not really. I'm just gonna draw it right here. Um, so that's why there's not a shadow on the left side because it's hitting it directly. It also doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to all be the same thicknesses. So, I'm just gonna do it quickly. And it's okay if these colors blend. I realize I blended a little bit into the, the red. Okay. Throw kindness around like confetti. Okay, now for the stippling. Final step, got this, home stretch. When you're doing this, like I said, I do not want you to trace around your bubble letters. Let me rephrase that. If you'd like, you can trace around your bubble letters if you wanna create bubble lettering. If you wanna create stippling, use that as your guideline and what you're gonna do is you can decide if you want to use the brush chip side, or you can also use, I'm gonna use this side, the other side of the my Tombadil brush pen. And what you're going to do is you're just going to draw circles. You can draw them, I'm gonna draw them a little bit bigger. They can be any size. And so I'm drawing them along my black outline, so my bubble lettering that I created. And this, I'm going to go fast, so you don't have to go this fast. They don't have to be perfectly there. This is not the time to use math. They don't need to be perfectly spaced out. This is more just to create the illusion. And this is your confetti, because when you throw confetti, Keenan, have you ever thrown confetti? <laughs> uh, they used to call me Keenan Confetti in high school, so <laughs> I've thrown my fair share of confetti. What color was your confetti? Uh, what, color would you, what color would, would your confetti be? If I were be? to throw confetti, probably gold. I, li I like the color of that gold chrome right there, the chrome gold we've got. I don't know. Fancy schmancy. Yeah, you know? Who's bougie now? Who's bougie now? <laughs> 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 So you could also mix up the colors if you don't just want to do this gold. Um, okay, so I'm going to have Keenan speed this up, but while you're doing this, what ha is happening is go along the lines and then you can just add in spaces, fill in the spaces in between, and then I'll come back when I'm done. So that was a lot. Um, the last thing I want to show is that when you're doing this, if you want to, you can add in some other color. You might not be able to see it because I did so much, but maybe you add in, just sprinkle in 
sprinkle some kindness and sprinkle some coral in if you'd like. So when you were doing this, what I also didn't mention earlier before we went on speed mode was what you can do is you can make it really concentrated more around the letters. And then as you go out, it's like Keenan just threw confetti on the word. And when you throw confetti, it's obviously concentrated in the middle and then it sprawls out. See, I threw kindness at the word confetti. Oh, yes. what's see, the count at? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say 12 to 15. <laughs> I don't know if we're there yet. I don't know if we've hit the tens. But we can just make it so that we did. Yeah. Um, so that's why I went from more, the my dots are closer together. And then as you go further away, they're more spread out. So I am really excited about this. Whoa, it's like magic. Oh, hold on. So I just noticed one thing. This is just me wanting to fix it. Is the F needed some love, the top of the F. It's a little sparse right there. Okay, then it rounds it out. And then make sure to close your caps and lightly take off your paper and we're good to go. Throw kindness around like confetti. I am really, really excited. This is a cool, it's, it's a new technique. It's something different. You can sprinkle it in whenever you feel fancy and feel like feeling like doing it. The final thing that I want to say is that we have a Facebook group where you can come and join if you want to see other people's creations and also encourage each other to do lettering. I think it's something that's so, it's very impactful, but it's also very easy to not be kind on yourself because you want it to be perfect or you want it to look a certain way. And here at Let's Make Art, we just want to encourage you to create. Create kindness, create confetti, just create everything and share it with us. So we have a Facebook group, we have an Instagram that's also, it's called Let's Go Make Art. And you can tag us in there and we'd love to see as well. And I think that's it. Thank you everyone for being here and I will see you next week.